Hello again. On the last one, last video, I promised you that I would do a tutorial. This tutorial, hopefully, is wire rope wicking. One of those. If it focuses, focus. Wire rope, stainless steel wire rope. What we're going to do is put another one into this, and hopefully it's going to look like that. Sorry, it's going to look like that. So I'm going to put dual wire rope into my Kraken. So let's go down below, let's have a look at what we're going to need to do a wire rope build, and let's get to making a wire rope. Here we are, a list, a list, a picture of basically what you're going to need to make your wire rope wick. The items for your wick itself, you're obviously going to need some wire rope. It's three different sizes there. Find out what size that you want to build, which will be determined by the holes in your deck. You're going to need some cantle to coil your wick. I would also recommend putting some of them on. That's stainless steel mesh. Because if you only use wire rope, those grooves in it prevent your coil from touching your wire rope so you're going to get dry spots on your coil and all that that does is give it a smooth surface for your coil to sit on never actually built one of those without that but everybody suggests putting some stainless mesh on. What tools are we going to need? You're going to need some scissors. Scissors are to cut your mesh. It's only thin mesh so you can cut it with those are just a cheap pair of scissors. Don't need anything expensive. You're going to need a pair of tweezers. Highly recommend ceramic tweezers good for building your coil and they're good for building a, a mesh or wire rope wick but I'll show you that shortly don't don't go for a set of metal ones or your long nose pliers which we'll go to in a moment you're going to need a set of wire cutters. Get yourself a decent set of wire cutters. Don't scrimp on them. If you use a pair of pliers with the wire stripping, then you're going to destroy your pliers in no time. Because it is stainless steel wire. It's tough. It's not just like ordinary galvanized steel wire. It's stainless steel wire. Very tough. You can use a, a hammer and chisel but your cut end will look rough. You can cover it up with your mesh but you'll still know that it's there. So get yourself a decent pair. Pick these up at my local B&Q or Home Depot these are just a set of JCB ones. Um, I have used these. They're not bulletproof, but they work. Don't use wire cutters. You're also going to need a power source. I'm just using a little uh, 
and blow a lamp here. But you can use whatever heat source that you want. Whether you want to use a dedicated blowtorch, you could even use a lighter, but I wouldn't recommend it. Get yourself a decent heat source. So let me clear this away and let's get back into the build. Just got myself some 2mm stainless rope. This is uh, 719 stainless steel wire rope. What does the 719 mean? If you look at the side of the rope, you'll see the large spirals. It means there's seven of them. In the smaller, see if we can focus onto it. In each of them large strands, if you want to call them, the smaller threads. So there's 19 threads in each one of those strands. That's what your 719 means. You can get 519 or something like that, but uh, I recommend 719 more wicking of it. So we've got our Kraken, we've got our wire rope, we need to cut our length. So what length are we going to determine? Well, I'm going to put it in and I'm going to mark it on a comb to about there. I've just marked, put a mark on it. Some people will tell you, put some tape around it before you cut it, stops it fraying. Personal preference, because the cutters that I've got, they're quite good. But if you're using the tape, put some tape around it, put it in, mark your tape. And then let's go ahead and cut this. This is where your decent, good quality cutters come in. It's tough. If you're using low quality products, this is going to be the hard part. Watch that or flying out. It is hard. That's why you need to get yourself a decent set of cutters. I've just cut that and as you can see there's no fraying on that. So that's now good to go. If you would put tape on it you'd have to start unwrapping the tape. It's not a bad method it's just whatever you decide to do. So now that we've cut it we need to get rid of all that oil, contaminants, who knows what's on it. That's where your stainless steel, sorry, your ceramic tweezers come into it. So now, we're going to heat it up. You want to heat it up, let me get in a bit closer, there we go, you want to heat it up until it glows, I'm going to burn all that contamination off. Don't worry about it, you get in very very hot, because that's what you want. Burn it all off. If you're using metal tweezers or pliers, you have to stop there. But look at the stainless, uh, sorry the ceramic, glowing like billy or 
but they're still holding on. The heat will transfer through. Let's turn it round. Turn it round. You're not going to overheat it. Get as much heat in that as you can. Burn all that contamination off it. I'm trying to do this on camera and on the tweezers itself. And there we go. We've had it nice and glowing. Very all hot and bothered under the collar. Now then, word of advice, word of warning. Put it on something that can take the heat. You've just had that very hot. Don't touch your tweezers, don't touch your wire. It's going to be extremely hot. But we need to put it down to one side to do the next part. Which is your mesh. You need to do the same with your mesh. Once your wick has cooled down now cool down. Put it into your atomizer. You now need to determine how much mesh that you want on the top. You can always cut it down after. So that's about what I want. I've already used this on that part, so the process is fairly simple out a bit. So you would measure how much of that that you needed, cut it off, cut it to length. I've just done that one in the past but I'll show you anywhere. Same as what the rope is, hold it in your tweezers and new kit. Gets all the machining oil off. If you're using metal tweezers or your pliers, you have to move it around when you get to that point. These are allowing the heat to go through it. Again, put that down somewhere safe until it's cooled down. Whether you want to quench it or not, it's entirely up to you. So, now let's build the rest of the wick. Now that we've got our wick, or wire. We need to wrap the mesh around it. So if you're used to rolling your cigarettes, this will be a piece of cake for you. All we need to do, don't need to leather it, you just need to get one or two wraps around it. and then cut it off and then just keep rolling it to tighten it up just keep rolling it in your fingers roll it one way, it gets tighter roll it the other way and it will get slack so now 
that's holding itself in. Make sure it's high enough so that it can sit. That's sitting just at the bottom, just a fraction off, and that is just a little bit above our post. So, quite happy with that. I'm just going to trim the excess of that off. So, I'll just trim that off. There we go. You can now wrap your coil onto that. So, what I'm going to do now is then we just pre-cut lengths of cantle. I've already determined how much wire that I need. That's for another video. I think I've covered it in another a previous one. Have a look on my playlist. But I'm just going to wrap that onto the wick, to the mesh part of the wick, put it into the deck and then we'll get back and have a look at that. There we go, we'll just put the coils in. Just put them both in into there, recoil the, uh, the other one, put in the new one. Not the prettiest of coils, but we will show in 0.4 ohms, we will see what it's like, 15 watts. Blowing rather nicely. I'm happy with those. Let me stick some juice in. And let's see what it performs like. So, back up top. Just stuck some cotton candy in, just before I put the top on. That's it. F 15 watts. So, let's go back up, let's have a look. Just put the top on it. Got both air rolls fully open. Just bumped it up to 20 watts. So see what that's like. That was just a mouth to lung. What's it going to be like on a lung hit? can I say. No breaking in time for it. Um, I'm going to close that down a little bit. I'm suffering from a bit of a cold. <coughs> oh that really got to me. Not recommended to lung hit when you've got a cold. Oh, I'm going to mouth, mouth to lung at this time. Just cut the air holes down a little bit. Still on 20 watts. About, take that out, about halfway open. Still superb, partly open. Mesh wicks and wire rope wicks. Some people shy away from them, from them. Um, why? You've got no breaking in time. If your wick gums up a little bit, you can clean it. Just dry burn it. Run it under a bit of water 
um, underneath the tap, the faucet, and dry burn it again. Gets rid of all that um, deposits on your wick. If you've got a cotton wick, with that, if I run out with a cotton wick in, it'll burn your cotton. With a mesh or wire rope, if you run out, it just goes dry. You don't burn. So when you refill your tank up, don't have that burnt taste like you do with cotton. From what I've experienced in the past, if you forget to fill your tank up, you've got cotton wicking, you get that dry hit, fill it up, still get a bit of a burnt taste from it. I've not found any burnt taste from these. Uh, I think they're superb. If you get used to coiling with a stainless wick, whether it be the stainless mesh or the stainless rope, you'll never go back, particularly on a Genesis style. Uh, very easy to do. I can't stress how easy they are. Once you've cut your length of wire rope, once you've put the mesh over the top, your taste is there straight away. There's no breaking in of, of the wick, no breaking in of the coil, it's up there straight away. Brilliant. I'm getting the full flavour through it. Um, it's not too hot. Speaking of heat, your wick will take a little bit of the heat on that initial firing so you'll have to compensate slightly from what you're used to if you're on cotton, cotton's an insulator so it puts all the heat to your juice um, so it's just a, a slight compensation you might have to take it up a, a, a watt or two um, until you get used to it Right, I had to cut that last session short because uh, that long hit uh, really took it out of me. Uh, what more can I add to that? Um, well, not not a lot really. Uh, give give it a, a try um, at least once. You never know unless you try something. So. That about sums it up for making a wire rope wick um, with the stainless steel mesh on the top of it. I'm just trying to think what I actually did in the video because um, it was yesterday when I did it. Uh, that's alright, I think we'll wrap this one up. So until the next time, look after yourselves and stay safe. I've just realised I've not told you what's coming in the next video. How about I show you how to mix your own fluid. Works out cheaper, you can customise it to your own tastes. I do it. So I'll see you in the next one when I'll be mixing some fluids. Catch you later.